there will be times when it feels like you're surrounded and there's no way that you can win. Your opponent will seem to have more power than you, more authority than you, and just feel like that's somebody or something that you can't overcome. That's when you rely solely on the power of God and focus on your righteousness and your relationship with God, not your opponent. And God steps in and he delivers you, but you've got to have the faith and the courage to know that God will intervene if you just hold on to your faith. As always, I'm so glad to be back here for the Sanctuary Sunday School. And again, we're rebranding to the Sunday School Renaissance. And thank you so much for all of the feedback and all of the input. I love it. Keep commenting, keep interacting with me because it truly gives me strength. Again, if you have not subscribed, I need you to do so. I'm noticing the subscriptions are rising. That's what we need. Thank you so much. This week's subject is Hezekiah rallies Judah's army. And we see here that we see Hezekiah. And when you read about him in the previous chapters, he was a good king and he, he lived righteously before the Lord. And he led the kingdom of Judah in the paths of righteousness. And even in him doing that, Sennacherib, who was the king of the Assyrian army, saw fit to come against him. And he wanted to siege and take over the fortified cities for himself. And if you study the Assyrians throughout the Old Testament, they were powerful. And at some point in history, the Assyrian power was the world power. They controlled the entire world at certain points in history. So this was a very formidable opponent for Hezekiah because the children of Israel or the Judah, the children of Judah, they were not known to be warriors. Remember, they were God's people and God had fought for them. So they never really amassed a huge army and they were not known for their strength on the battlefield. And so Sennacherib saw this as an opportunity and he thought that he was about to just go in and take their cities away from them. And when Hezekiah saw it, I love this because even though he was outnumbered, you know, they had more strength, they had more weapons and everything, he still had a plan and he moved and he told them, he said, well, we're going to cut off the waterway so they can't come in here and they're not going to be able to just get water that easily. And then he began to fortify the cities. He fortified the walls and he even built extra walls around his city to keep his people safe inside. And then he began to increase the building of weapons so they could be able to protect themselves. And he started doing these things. And there comes a time when God moves on your behalf because of your righteousness, but he also moves on your behalf for his namesake. Because we see here that Sennacherib seemed to think that God, right, was a God just like their God. What is to speak of the Bible with the little G-O-D. He had no respect for him and he had no clue the power of the one true living God. And he began to taunt Hezekiah and the people of Judah. And he said, you know, why are you listening to him? He we have these gods and he's not worshiping our gods and he's got you worshiping that one God. And that God can't do nothing for you. That God can't save you. You worshiping God, but we're greater and we're more powerful than you anyway. And he did not understand the magnitude and the sovereign power of the one true and living God. And see, you have to be careful with that because sometimes people can attack us and, and you know, that's not okay. It doesn't feel good, but then sometimes they cross the line, right? It's one thing for you to attack me, but it's a whole nother level when you attack the God in me. And that is exactly what Sennacherib did. And you know, he was there and he was coming against Hezekiah and Hezekiah remained faithful and he remained dutiful. And he his priority was, number one, doing the will of God and number two, protecting his people and his kingdom. And that's where his focus was. And God came in and he annihilated Sennacherib and Sennacherib died. And that's what we have to remember when people come against us and they attack 
our very salvation. They attack the very God in us. That's a time when we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be worried. You know, there are times when people have done things against me, but it impacted the ministry, right? And the work of God that I was trying to do. And instead of me being mad at them, I was scared for them because I'm like, whoa, what you just did placed you in danger. And now as uh, they had the meme out, it's out of my hands. Even if I decide to let you get away with it, you're not going to get away with that with God because you've attacked God's kingdom. And we want to always find ourselves in a position like Hezekiah was in the lesson where we're protected by the safety of the will of God. And this is a very important lesson because, again, like I said, Hezekiah didn't do anything. Hezekiah was doing what he was supposed to do. And he was where he was supposed to be living godly and righteous and all of that. But the enemy came in and attacked him anyway. And see, sometimes we we, are, we have the misunderstanding that once we get saved and we, we change our lives, life is going to be a bed of roses and nothing is ever going to go wrong again. That's when the enemy will come against you. And it's in those times when you can't fall, when you know you've been living all you know how, when you know that you've given God your best, when you know that you walked righteously before the Lord and something just comes out of nowhere and blindsides you and attacks you and, and tries to take you out. Not only did Sennacherib attack them, Sennacherib undermined Hezekiah's authority and he slandered his name. Anybody out there ever had your name slandered? Well, somebody just say stuff about you that just ain't true. They just made something up. I know I have. And, and, and those things can get a little bit difficult to deal with. But Hezekiah did not allow that to distract him from his focus, which was to do the will of God. You've got to say, stay focused. Just type in the comments. I'm going to stay focused because see in this day and age, there are so many distractions as we are moving, as we have moved back into the sanctuaries. A lot of the churches are open again, and there's so many things coming against us and, and we're I'm seeing people get distracted and fo distracted and focus on the wrong thing and not maintaining that concentration on God. See, when you're not concentrating on God, then the gospel and the righteousness of your life gets watered down. But see, you can't be watered down. This is a time where we need some power. How many people need some power? Just say power, type power in the comments, because that is what Hezekiah said. He told them, he said, I know he said, he said, don't be scared. I know that they are number us. I know that they're more powerful than us physically, but we have a power that they are no match for. Sennacherib and them Assyrians don't have no idea what they're in for. And sometimes you've just got to sit back, right? Let people threaten, let them run their mouths, let them talk about you, let them make fun of you. Because when you know that you know that you know that you are living right and you're doing right and you're upholding that bloodstained banner of Christianity and you're living all that you know how and, and it feels like the, the job is going crazy, you know, and, and, and we're living in a time where we're seeing a great deal of perversion. And I say that because in places and bureaucracies and places of authority where we're supposed to be able to go to for help, people that we're supposed to be able to trust, that's where we're finding evil. And so instead of being able to pick up the phone and call this institution or whatever it may be, whether it's the school, whether it's the government, whether it's the police, whether it's the fire, whether it's the preacher, whatever it may be, when we call those people, we're finding righteousness. But that's okay, because the Bible already told us, right, about spirit. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood, right, but against spiritual wickedness in high places, about against principality, principality. So don't be shocked, don't be alarmed, don't be afraid. Be like Hezekiah. Say, hey, I know it looks like the matchup is not in our favor. From the natural eye, it looks like there's no way we're going to be able to come out of this. But my God, okay? But my God, I know I've been telling you, but I want you to put that in the comments for real. <clears throat> but my God, because I just felt that one. One of these days, I'm going to bring my daughter on. 
And we're going to testify about what we've gone through in the last 12 months. You guys would not believe. And, and I thank God because I was able to go through all of it and be on camera, right? Like everything is all right. I was off camera for a few weeks when it got really rough. But for the most part, for the last 12 months, I've been on camera through everything. And, and when I tell my testimony, see, I'm one of those people. I don't whine. I don't complain. I don't tell people what's going on with me. But when it's all over. I got a testimony and I'm sure that you all have testimony. We need to just have a testimony live session so we can just talk about the goodness of God because see, there's a lot of Sennacheribs in the world. And he was talking about, you must not know who I am, right? All of the people that we conquered, my predecessors, everybody before me, they were tough and I'm just as tough as them. And how are you going to stand against me? He was just really selling wolf tickets, as my dad would say, and threatening them and talking about who he was and how great he was. He had no clue. See, that's what the enemy will do to you. He will throw one thing after other after you and he'll talk to you right and he'll tell you you can't do this you can't make it why don't you just stop and stop telling and stop getting on that sanctuary Sunday school and telling the people about God you need to go back and backslide because God is not moving for you but God but God God brought me through just like he did Hezekiah and he will do the same thing for you all of those lies, right, that the enemy is telling you. Just like read through the text again. Has Sennacherib, he had a whole list of things and reasons why they should not listen and follow Hezekiah. And the devil is doing the same thing to us. But God, Hezekiah knew to call on the name of God. And remember this part. He annihilated the enemy. Sennacherib didn't even survive the battle. Not only are you going to survive the battle, you're going to win the battle. I'm going to say that one again. Not only are you going to survive the battle, you're going to win the battle. Want to know how I know? Because I'm winning. I've been through the battle. I've been under siege. I've been attacked. And I won. I'm still standing. I'm not laying down. I'm not unconscious. I'm not bleeding. I'm healed. And I'm standing. And God will do the same thing for you. So when you think about this lesson, then when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Lift up that standard. Whatever you do, whatever you do, don't let go of your faith. Don't compromise your salvation stand on the word of God and let God deal with your enemies. You are blessed.